Hi, my student Taggy here. In this video, I'm going to look at intersecting lines and curves within polynomials. Now, I already included an example of this in a previous lesson, but after I started teaching it, I actually split it into a separate lesson altogether because it was quite difficult for the class I was doing. And also, normally before polynomials, we've maybe met straight line. And in the past papers, the most common questions are find the point of intersection of the tangent and the curve, which could become a polynomial, but it's using the same method. So what I thought is, let's do it completely separate. My class haven't done straight line yet, so my examples purely are find where this quadratic meets this cubic, find where this cubic meets this straight line. So we're going to do two examples, and then I've got some examples on this video that you can go try with answers. So this is our method. Now, to point of intersection at National 5 level is simultaneous equations, and most people do simultaneous equations by a thing called the elimination method. We have to try and get away from that sometimes at higher. There was another method, which we never really teach at National 5, called substitution. If I told you that, for example, y equaled 3x, but and I had another line and I told you, well, y also equaled 2x plus uh, 4. If y equals this and y equals this, then those things must be equal. Do you agree? So the method we do for points of intersection is we're going to have two curves or lines, beginning with y equals. Now, you put them equal to each other. So this is why we write down this thing, set y equal to y. It's called the substitution method. We're basically replacing y with what we've said y is in the other equation. So in step x, we're going to have two equations. We're going to set y equal to y. We're going to do what Beyonce said and take everything to the left, to the left, right? To one side, basically. And usually it is the left, let's be honest. For some of the questions, we will use a nested table. This is only if the coefficient is x cubed or more, right? If it isn't an x cubed, for example, if it's an x squared, you can get it by factorising. But if it's an x cubed, we're going to have to go do our nested table or, or our synthetic division, whatever you call it. Then we're going to fully factorise to get our x coordinates using our quotient, etc. And then once you know your x coordinate, you plug it back into one of these y equals equations and you can find out your y coordinate. So let's see this in action because so far you might be thinking, what is she talking about? So I want the point of intersection of these two curves. We've got a cubic and a quadratic. So following the steps I just said, we both have y equals and y equals. So we're going to put them equal to each other. And generally the trick is the one with the biggest degree on it put to the left hand side. So I'm going to put the cubic on the left. So I've got x cubed minus x squared, etc. equals this. Now, then I'm going to bring everything to the left-hand side. So there's no other x cubed to bring over. If I'm doing my x squared, so I've got minus 1, and then this one will become over and become minus 1 again. So you've got minus 1, minus 1, so I've got minus 2x squared. You need to be really good at your rearranging for this. Some of you might do the balancing and write the wee bits underneath. Next, I'm going to do my x's. So I've got a minus 3 already. Plus 2 will become a minus 2. So I'm going to have minus 5x. And in terms of the numbers, I've got plus 3. This will become plus 3. So I've got plus 6. I notice I did lots of underlining there to try and just help make sure I did each thing in term. So I did my cubic, I did my squares, my x's and then my numbers. So then that all becomes equal to zero. And what we have to do now is we have to solve that. So we go to our nested table. So we're going to put in 1, minus 2, minus 5 and 6. So we need to play around with numbers that are going to work. Now, I don't know if I've, you've seen this in a previous video or not, but the trick is if all those numbers at the top of your table add up to zero, then the number one will always work here. And they do because I get seven minus seven, it makes zero. So I know the number one's definitely going to work and be one of my first roots. So we have one times one is one. Minus two add one is minus one. Still minus one. That gives you minus six, minus six and zero. And look, because you've got remainder equals zero, we know that x um, equals one as a root. So we sense, it's not asked to prove it, but you know, I just get into the habit of always writing it. Um, and I write remainder equals zero. So x minus one is a factor. x equals one 
is a root. So I shouldn't have to go over that all the time because that's from a previous lesson. So let's fully factorise it now. So our first factor is x minus 1. Your quotient comes from here. So that is three terms. So x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Let's factorise it. Right, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 1. It's going to be a 3 and a 2. And minus 3 plus 2. Okay. Let's move that up. So from there, we solve each of those equal to 0. So you get x equals 1, x equals 3, and x equals minus 2. So we have the first part of all our coordinates. We now need to get the y coordinates. OK. So what you do is we're going to go back to the top. I can't remember what the equation was. And you're going to take the simplest equation to substitute into. In my case is the quadratic. And that is what we're going to substitute into. And I'm just writing it again there for my reference. So to get your first coordinate, you're going to replace x with the number 1. So for when x is 1, you end up with 1 squared plus 2 minus 3. 1 plus 2 minus 3 is just 0. So my first y is 0, and that gives me the coordinate 1, 0. For the next one, I'm going to plug in the number 3. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. Take away 3. So that gives me uh, 12. So my second coordinate, the y part is 12. So I've got 3, 12. And then the last one, I'm going to plug in the minus 2. Minus 2 squared is 4. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. And then take away 3. So that's minus 3. Now you don't need to always do working for that. But I've certainly done it at the side. So these are your three points of intersection of the curve. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do where this quadratic meets this straight line. This is actually maybe a wee bit easier to do than the previous one because when you come to the substitution part, it's much easier to do. So let's have a look. So the first thing to do is set y equal to y and put the, the biggest degree on the left-hand side. So we're going to put the cubic on the left. I'm going to bring everything to the left-hand side, so there's no squared to move over. So I have x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5. This becomes minus 2, so minus 7x. This will become a plus 1, so minus 11 plus 1 will be minus 10, and that all equals 0. I'm going to have to go do my nested table. 1, 4, minus 7, minus 10. Right, my little trick from the last slide is not going to work on this one because the number one, uh, they don't, the coefficients don't add up to zero. So if I have to think of other numbers that multiply to 10, I'm going to try the minus one. One times, bring down the one, sorry. One times one is minus one. Four minus one is three. Times it by negative one is minus three. This is going to work. This gives me minus 10, which becomes positive 10 when you times it. So my remainder is zero. So remainder equals zero. Excuse my writing there. So x plus 1 this time is a factor. And x equals 1, sorry, minus 1 is a root. Okay, and as I said, I just always write it for good measure. Right, so what I need to do is now we need to factorise. So our first factor was x plus 1. Your quotient is x squared plus 3x minus 10. It all equals zero. Simple trinomial. Numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 3. It's definitely a 5 and a 2. To get positive 3, the 5 is positive, the 2 is negative. Solve each of them. We have minus 1, minus 5, and 2. And remember, we are looking for coordinates. Now, the easiest one to sub into it was a straight line one, so we're going to sub into y equals 2x minus 1. Right, let's create some space. So, substitution bit, let's do the minus 1 first. So if I'm subbing in minus 1, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, take away 1 is minus 3. 
So your first coordinate is minus 1, minus 3. Sub in the number minus 5. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. Take away another 1 gives you minus 11. So second coordinate minus 5, minus 11. And the last one, uh, if you sub in the number 2, doing 2 times 2 is 4. Take away 1 is 3. So your last coordinate is 2. These are your three points of intersection. Let's try a couple of these on your own. Here they are here. Now, technically, the ones I just did follow examples 3, 4 and 5. Because if you look at question 1 and 2, when you start to bring the, the second one over when you do your y equal to y, you're still just going to have a power x squared as your highest thing. So you don't need to do the nested table at all. You're just going to be able to do a... Uh, factorise a quadratic and I didn't do one like that mine were always ones with cubics so if you want to try these go try question three four and five now I do have answers on the next slide and there was a tiny mistake I'm pretty sure if I remember when I was teaching it I think that one of these ones one of these first ones had a minus on it so I can't remember if it was the three or the two but one of them is negative so it's actually either minus three or minus two and I'm sorry about that but the rest of it's right so thanks very much.